Photography filters. What are they? What are they for? And which are the best brands? In this video, I'm going to look at some of my favorite filters and explain when and why I need to use them. So here in front of me, I have all of my most commonly used filters. I choose a brand called Lee Filters. They are a reputable brand and a sub-brand of Panavision. I like the quality of what they produce, their choice of systems for different cameras, and I've also found their IRND filters to be the highest quality neutral density filters available. Other good brands for filters are B&W Filters, Tiffin, Format High Tech, and Nissi, to name a few. So let's discuss my favorite filters and why and when they are useful. First up are my neutral density filters. Now, ND filters are fairly self-explanatory. They are essentially like a pair of sunglasses blocking out or reducing the amount of light. Now, why would you need to reduce the amount of light? Well, there are several reasons. The first being that when you need to attain longer shutter speeds. So you want to basically increase your shutter speed time for capturing motion in the shot. Now, that may be water motion flowing on a river or the motion of waves or the motion of trees swaying in the wind it could be a number of things but basically we need to increase our shutter speed to a longer time to do that and neutral density filters allow you to achieve that now neutral density filters uh, come in different strengths so this is a three stop irnd filter which means it's going to cut out three stops of light and this one is a two stop irnd filter now, the interesting thing about the IRND filters is they are the most neutral filter I have ever come across. Generally speaking, uh, any type of filter, whether it's a neutral density or a graduated neutral density, you may have some sort of color cast implication from using the filter. But with these IRND filters, they are absolutely neutral. And because of that, I'm also able to use them in the studio. Now in a studio environment, you might think, well, why would you need to use them uh, for studio use? But sometimes when you're shooting or you want to shoot very large aperture, fully open aperture, you can't get the power of your lights down low enough to work at those large apertures. And in those instances, perfectly neutral IRND filters are an absolute must. Now, there are less expensive neutral density filters. Lee also make a range of what I think they call pro glass uh, neutral, de neutral density filters that are less expensive than their IRNDs and do a good job. The next filters that I want to look at are the graduated filters. Here is a three stop graduated filter and you can see that graduation going from dark three stops blocking of light and then fading out softly to completely clear. And here is a two stop version. So this cuts out two stops of light and this cuts out three stops of light. And the trick is that you can position the graduation part wherever you want in your frame. Because these type of filters rely on a slide in filter holder system. So what you do is you take the filter, you slide it into the slot, and then you can position the filter wherever you want in relation to your lens, like so. And then it's very easy with a set of different filter rings to attach the filters to your camera because they just clip onto the ring. So this lens already has a ring attached to it, but you can uh, purchase rings in different diameters for different lenses. So rather than have to replace all of your filters with different size screw-in filters. You just need one filter system and one or two holders, if you like, and a number of different filter rings to attach to the different lenses that you've got. So on this particular lens, I've already got a ring screwed into the end of it. And that ring, as I said, will allow me to mount the filter holder. And then the filter holder can accept multiple filters. You can 
in this case, I've only got two slots on it, but you can build that up with extra layers to have two, three, four slots if necessary. Or you can use some of the other filters in this system, like this circular polarizer, which I'll come to later. So the neutral density graduated filters are uh, very important to my work. These filters are essential for darkening the sky, but keeping, it, keeping the land at the correct exposure. What you'll often find in landscape photography is that when you've set your shot up and you look at the resulting image, especially when you're shooting a sunset or sunrise shot, is that the sky area and the clouds are much, much brighter than the land area in front of you in the foreground. And this disparity in exposure causes photographers great problems. Now, whilst you can work around it by taking a separate exposure for the sky and a separate exposure for the land and then combining those in post-production, there can be limitations to that because it may be a seascape you're photographing or there may be moving trees or other items in the shot. And if you're taking different images, items in the shot might not be in the same position. And this is where graduated filters come in really, really well. By using the graduated filter, you can block out two or three or even more stops of light just from the sky, and then it feathers away here to keep the land area completely clear. And that means you balance the exposure between the sky and the land to get a uniform exposure that looks much more natural and much more pleasing to the eye. Now, I uh, have a number of different graduated filters, as I mentioned, uh, in two stops, three stops power, and even here a four f-stop power graduated filter. Now, one of the things you may notice here is the softness or the hardness of the fall off of that graduation. So this is a three stop graduated soft filter, but this one is a three stop graduated hard filter. So this one finishes with a much more abrupt transition, which is perfectly okay if you've got a fairly strong horizon line with no sort of interruptions to worry about. If you've got a horizon line with maybe some rocks coming up into the horizon or trees or landscape, then a soft graduation is a better choice to use. The other advantage with using the slide-in holder system is that you don't have to use the filters in a completely horizontal format. So when you attach them to the lens, if, for example, your landscape uh, or your scene has got uh, a, a contouring landscape or something that isn't completely horizontal as the horizon, then you can actually tilt the filter at an angle and slide it in and out where you want it to go. So again, these slide-in filter options work really well. There are even the odd situation where you may want to reduce the exposure on the land and not the sky, such as light reflecting off of a lake. And in such instances, you can just turn the filter upside down and have the darker area at the bottom. Okay, let's move on to uh, some of the other filters in my range. As I said, mostly uh, we're looking at neutral density or graduated neutral density. There is another special filter, which is effectively a neutral density filter, but rather than just two or three stops, these are called big stopper filters. And you can see that they're almost completely black and they're almost impossible to see through. These come in six stop exposure drops or 10 stop exposure drops. That's blocking out 10 stops of light. And these are actually very, very effective for creating very unusual and surreal landscape images where you can obtain exposure times of several minutes long, even in the middle of the day. And this can be very, very useful for creating these surreal landscapes where the uh, clouds have streaked across the sky for those several minutes of exposure. Or also instances where water waves moving in and out against the shore over several minutes, or even used in city photography, where I've used big stopper filters on long exposures of a minute or more at very crowded locations, even at the Louvre in Paris, where you want to eliminate people from the shot. 
And you can do this by using very, very long exposures because people aren't going to be standing still in one place necessarily for 10 minutes or so. So you end up with the people basically erasing themselves from the photo because they've moved around during the 10 minute exposure. So the big stopper range is also very, very useful. Now, I've got another interesting one here. This is the red filter. Now, the red filter is used mostly for black and white photography. This is my favorite filter for black and white photography back in the days of film, but it's even still useful on your digital cameras. Because a red filter, when we're talking about black and white photography, red is the opposite of cyan in the additive light um, spectrum and that uh, RGB color model. So red is going to cut out cyan and blues. And this can make for very powerful landscape images in black and white, where you want to achieve those very dark looking skies. So they would have been a blue sky in the original image, maybe with white puffy clouds. But by using the red filter, you can make that blue sky almost dark, dark gray or black with these bright high contrast white puffy clouds in there as well. And generally they just punch up the contrast and the richness of black and white images. And again, you can use these in combination with other filters as well, with graduated filters by layering them together. Now, finally, um, in terms of the actual filters, uh, some of the most useful filters to me are called polarizing filters. Here is um, one of the polarizing circular filters. Now it's not circular because it's actually circular in shape. Circular denotes the type of polarization method that it is using. So we have linear, linear polarization and circular polarization. And that's the way uh, the sort of frequency of light is cut out by the filter, whether it's in the spiral circular um, uh, polarization uh, cut out or whether it's just in the linear form. Now, both the circular or a linear type polarizing method will result in a similar level of polarization. It's just that with more modern cameras that have automated uh, light metering or autofocus, linear polarizers tend to disrupt those autofocus systems or the light metering system. So circular polarizing filters don't seem to uh, interrupt the autofocus or the uh, metering on cameras. So a lot of people opt for the circular polarizer. However, linear polarizers are much less expensive. They do the same job. And if like me, you're not worried about autofocus or you're not worried about the camera's metering because you're working completely in manual, then linear polarizers are the way to go. Certainly for me anyway. Now a polarizing filter, has a very different effect, one that can't be replicated in Photoshop. Polarizers cut out reflected light. In fact, they shouldn't really be called polarizers, they should be called depolarizers because what they're doing is actually removing the light that is already polarized. So this could be uh, the surface reflections off of leaves, surface reflections off uh, gloss, uh, surfaces or off of water. There are numerous applications where we can use polarizing filters to good effect to enhance the contrast in a landscape, to saturate the colors further, and to also increase contrast in skies. As a matter of fact, referring back to the red filter, which uh, we were talking about for black and white landscape photography, when it's used in combination with a polarizing filter, you can achieve some very interesting effects. Now, before we wrap this up, uh, we made a video uh, some time ago about UV filters. A lot of people uh, hear about UV or ultraviolet filters, and uh, they end up spending money on these filters. Uh, these are not really useful in my opinion, and I've made a video explaining and demonstrating why. A UV filter um, I can't see has any difference. I don't see any difference at all when using a UV filter to not using a UV filter. Uh, they're really meant to cut out ultraviolet light. That's the bluer light that you see in the shadows of your images, but I've never really noticed a difference. Uh, they look uh, and act pretty much like a clear filter, so they are useful 
uh, if you want to protect the end of the lens. So some people keep them permanently on the end of the lens. But personally, I don't like shooting through more glass than is necessary. So I don't bother with UV filters. What I do do on location, though, is I usually have duplicates of filters because when you're working in uh, a lot of sea spray and rough, difficult conditions, uh, then inevitably that sea spray and, and, and uh, rain or whatever ends up on the end of the filter. So I will have a spare filter in place as a protection until I'm ready to take the shot and then I'll take it out and then uh, get the shot. And then when that filter's messed up, I'll have another one washed using um, clear water or filter cleaner and having some clean cloths. And then I'll swap the filters over because usually some of the best conditions for shooting landscapes are actually in the worst weather conditions, which means you're gonna get spray and rain and mist all over the end of your filters. So by having duplicates of them, uh, I find the best way uh, of overcoming that problem. Finally, uh, I'm just going to mention a little bit about filter cases. Uh, filter cases are quite important actually because you need to transport these filters around in your camera bag or on your person and the uh, cases that are available are very useful so you can take your graduated filters slide them in they fit in nicely and you can take you know maybe a dozen of your favorite filters out with you on location in a nice pouch bag like that that can have a shoulder strap or a strap uh, for you to clip it over your tripod so that they're easily accessible. In the studio, I have a more um, uh, sort of defined portfolio case, if you like, for all my favorite studio filters to keep them safe. And again, you can put a little index on uh, the front as well. So that just about covers it on uh, filters and my favorite filters. I hope you found that information useful. Thanks very much for watching. Get my completely free photography course with no sign up required. You can also access our free 90 page ebook. Just click the link or go to carltaylereducation.com.